So, a warm welcome to the 24th lecture on the subject of digital signal processing and its applications. We have been discussing the Chebyshev low pass filter in the previous lecture. And we have already talked about the Butterworth filter in a couple of lectures before that, where we observed some interesting engineering behavior of the Butterworth filter. Namely, if you wish to place more stringent demands, then you need to invest more. This is, an, this is an observation that we made for the Butterworth filter. Now, we have in the previous lecture been able to come up with an expression for the order of the Chebyshev filter. Let us put down that expression. Now, essentially in the low pass filter design, we need to determine epsilon, which is what is called the tolerance parameter or ripple and the order. Which is essentially given by Cauch inverse, we have seen, we've seen this last time, have not we? Cauch inverse d 2 by d 1 square root divided by Cauch inverse omega s by omega p. Now, in the tolerance or the ripple epsilon, we saw that epsilon is less than equal to, of course, you know you always want it to be small if possible, less than equal to square root of d 1. But we also made an observation on why we should choose epsilon equal to square root of d 1 last time. In fact, if we look at this expression, we now make some observations about the behavior of the order with respect to d 2, d 1, omega s and omega p or rather the ratio omega s and omega p. Let us review a few ideas here. So, you see you recall that this is the specification with which we are working for the low pass filter. because this is an analog filter. So, you it goes all the way and you have omega p here, you have omega s, you have 1 minus delta 1 here and 1 there and delta 2 here. And d 2 is of course, 1 by delta 2 squared minus 1 and d 1 is 1 by 1 minus delta 1, the whole squared minus 1. Naturally, d 2 is expected to be greater than d 1, otherwise it does not make sense. That is because delta 2 is definitely expected to be less than 1 minus delta 1 and therefore, 1 by delta 2 squared is greater than 1 by 1 minus delta 1 squared. That is to be expected. Otherwise, it does not make sense. You know, if the pass band tolerance is such that the pass band amplitude goes below the stop band, it does not make sense to design the filter. And therefore, it is meaningful to say d 2 is greater, strictly greater than d 1. That is the least that you can ask. In fact, we expect that it should be reasonably greater. The better the filter, the greater it is. Better in the sense, delta 2 goes lower and lower and 1 minus delta 1 goes higher and higher. So, let us make these observations. I mean, this is not necessarily only for the Chebyshev filter, but for any low pass filter. In fact, you know, whenever there is a pass pan and stop pan adjoining, this is true. So, yes, there is a question. Yeah. Yeah, so the question is in this slide, should we put it from 1 plus delta 1 to 1 minus delta 1 or 1 to 1 minus delta 1? 
Now, you know in the Chebyshev filter, we are in a position to design it with the upper limit not going beyond 1. So, we are going to put the specification between 1 and 1 minus delta 1 rather than 1 plus delta 1 and 1 minus delta 1, because we can afford to do it here. We know that the Chebyshev magnitude can be constrained upwards by 1 and the same is true of the Butterworth magnitude. So, we do not need to go all the way to 1 plus delta 1 at all. So, the first thing is d 2 is always expected to be greater than d 1, since delta 2 is less than 1 minus delta 1. So, therefore, 1 by delta 2 squared is greater than 1 minus 1 by 1 minus delta 1 squared. And better means more d 2 minus d 1. The better the filter, the more the d 2 minus d 1. You know, now we are stepping into the territory of discrete time processing, where we need to appreciate engineering nuances. Before we talked about synthesis, we were essentially looking at analysis, where we were looking at system properties and so on. So, there were fewer engineering nuances at that point in time, but now we are looking at synthesis and synthesis as we can see is essentially a process of approximation by different approaches, approximation of the ideal and that is an engineering problem, distinctly an engineering problem. And therefore, we begin to see engineering nuances everywhere. Now, also omega s is clearly greater than omega p, I mean that is obvious, the stop band edge must be after the pass band edge. And therefore, omega s is great, clearly greater than omega p. And therefore, both d 2 by d 1 and omega s by omega p are great, are clearly greater than 1. And therefore, cosh inverse of both of these quantities are real, cosh inverse for each of these quantities are real. You see, because you take the inverse hyperbolic cosine of an argument, which is less than 1, it would turn out to be complex, right. There is no choice, but for it to be complex. It is only for arguments greater than 1, that you can have a real inverse hyperbolic cosine. In fact, let us recall a few properties of the hyperbolic cosine. cosh squared x minus shine squared x is equal to 1 or cosh squared x is 1 plus shine squared x. This is true for all x, for all complex x in fact. And in particular, if you want a real value for x here, you see, shine squared x would be real for real x. And therefore, if you want, you know, cosh inverse, then it is very clear that cosh x has to be greater than 1, because shine squared x for real x is going to be a quantity which is positive, non-negative at least. And therefore, cosh inverse must take an argument greater than 1, if you want the output to be real. And that is what we verified when we had d 2 by d 1 and omega s by omega p clearly greater than 1. Is that right? Now, also cosh, just like cosh is a monotonically increasing, cosh is monotonically increasing, is strictly monotonically increasing. In fact, it follows as a corollary that cosh inverse is also strictly monotonically increasing. This is easy to see, because what strictly monotonically increasing means between 0 and infinity is that, as you increase the argument from 0 to infinity, the cosine, the hyperbolic cosine also increases. So, it means if you are taking the inverse hyperbolic cosine of an argument that is increasing, the answer would also increase. 
I mean you know the independent variable increasing strictly increasing means the independent variable and the dependent variable increase simultaneously. And so, both the inverse and the function itself must be increasing. And therefore, inverse hyperbolic cosine or cosh inverse as we have called it is also a strictly increasing function. And now, we have some interesting insights into how the order behaves. You see the order n which is given by inverse hyperbolic cosh inverse d 2 by d 1 square root divided by cosh inverse omega s by omega p would clearly increase if the numerator increases and decrease if the denominator increases. Now, let us first look at the denominator fixing the numerator. When would the denominator increase? The denominator would increase if omega s by omega p is greater omega s by omega p being greater means that the stop band is further away from the pass band, which means you allowed a wider transition band. So, wider transition band translates to an increasing denominator, which means you are asking less and therefore, you expect the order to decrease. Of course, one must remember that decrease is always in steps, because the order needs to be an integer and you know the the order n instead of saying it is equal to this, we should say it is equal to the ceiling of this here. So, ceiling function is a stepped function does not suddenly change, I am sorry it does suddenly change and it does not you know with a small change within within between two integers the ceiling does not change that is what I meant. Yeah? So, you know where there is the possibility of transition from one integer to the other, there these factors do play a role. So, if you ask for a larger tolerance or if you make the pass band wider, I am sorry if you make the transition band wider, you are in effect asking for less and therefore, the order would tend to go down. Now, on the contrary let us look at the numerator. So, the numerator would increase if d 2 by d 1 is increasing. Now, d 2 by d 1 would increase as you can see if the filter becomes better quote unquote better. Better means that either delta 2 squared comes down or 1 minus delta 1 squared goes up or both of them happen. That means, you are asking for a more stringent tolerance in the pass band and or the stop band. In either case, even if you fix the stop band and ask for more from the pass band or if you fix the pass band and ask for more from the stop band, you are increasing d 2 by d 1 and that means that the numerator is increasing and consequently of course, you are likely to be increasing the requirement of order. So, what we saw in the Butterworth filter holds good for the Chebyshev filter too. Ask for more and you have to invest more, right. So, we must write that down again. Here too, asking for more that means more d 2 by d 1 or less omega s by omega p implies investing more more n n is a direct measure of investment In fact, now we have seen why n is directly a measure of investment. n translates also into the order of the discrete time filter, how many delays you will need, how many multipliers, all that is implied by n. We have seen that in the Butterworth filter. So, it is very clear that n implies the resources required. 